Okay, we've got here an interesting integral today. We've got the integral from zero to infinity e to the minus x squared sine three x dx. The reason I'm doing this one is really similar to a problem from Caltech Math Meet. The only difference with that one, well, it had a different angle, but it was cosine instead of sine. The thing about doing it with sine though, it actually makes it quite a bit more complicated even though it looks the same. So I'm not even sure how this works out. I didn't completely finish it on paper. It's kind of a mess. So, so I'm hoping I can make this work out to some kind of reasonable answer. But we're going to do the exact same technique. We're going to use Feynman's trick on it. Parameterize it, creating a t. So when we do this, I'm going to use the t value is going to be this 3 right here. So we'll do it like e minus x squared, and we'll call this our function sine tx. And so doing this, we know just to get back to our answer, we want to find this thing. So this thing is just going to be f at 3. Then for Feynman's trick, we want to differentiate this. Now again, similar to what I did in that other video with cosine, we really don't have any worries about the convergence because like sine, this is going to be between minus 1 and 1. And this is quickly going off to zero, and we don't have any problem at zero either, but if you look at like e to the zero is one, so it's all gonna be within, so everything's gonna be within one and minus one. So we'll just go ahead and differentiate this. Now we're differentiating with respect to t, so this right here is just a constant with respect to t, so we'll just bring that down. Derivative here is gonna be cosine tx, chain rule on this, with respect to t, and an x is going to pop out, so we get x dx. Now one thing I want to note from this first equation, we like to have a value, we're going to need a value later on that we can evaluate this at, and I think what works, f of 0, because if you plug 0 in for the t right there, sine at 0, 0, so this whole integral will be 0, so we can use that later. I think that's gonna be a big difference. In the other problem, we evaluated cosine at zero, and then this becomes the Gaussian integral. I think that's nicer. I think this is gonna be a little more painful. But anyway, we'll just keep going. I'll just, <laughs> but anyway, we'll keep going with it. So then here, I wanna integrate this, and to do it, what we can do is we can do integration by parts on it, but I wanna set it up first. Let's multiply in, I should actually do it over here. Let's squeeze in a minus two right here to set up a u substitution with this. And then so I don't change it, let's do minus one half in front. So then with this integral, we can just do integration by parts. We'll do the di method over here to the right. I'm going to differentiate cosine tx. And then what we'll do is we'll integrate e minus x squared 2x. Oh, and sorry, no, minus 2x. The reason for this is we can do a u substitution over here. Just doing it in our head, we would do the u substitution for minus x squared. And then this thing right here would be our du. So when we integrate, we just get back e minus x squared. Then over here, let's see, that's going to be, we're going to have a minus come out. When we do this, we're going to have minus sine tx. And then chain rule, a t is going to pop out. So putting together the pieces on this, we'll distribute in minus one half, and we have this from the diagonal, so it's gonna be cosine tx e minus x squared from zero to infinity. And then here, what we have this, it repeats, because f of t is this thing, and this is gonna be, when we put this back in an integral, this is gonna be exactly f of t. So here, minus times minus is plus, but I need to distribute in minus a half. So put that all together, we're gonna have minus one half. We still have a t, f of t. Okay, so come over here and evaluate. When we look at this here at infinity, the exponential is gonna be much more powerful. You know, cosine, it's not really gonna converge, but it's going between minus one and one, while this quickly goes to zero. So the infinity is going to zero. And at zero, that's a little more tricky because Okay, at zero, this is one, this is one. So like this goes away, we still have the minus one half, but it's gonna be the second part of the evaluation. So it's gonna be minus times minus is plus here. So altogether, what we have, it's gonna be half minus half t 
f of t. In this whole thing, this is just going to be our f prime of t values. So what we actually have here is a differential equation. Not too difficult, I don't think. Looks like it's going to be linear. So let me take this differential equation. We'll clean up the board and we'll work on this thing here. Okay, so now when I rewrote this, I did one step in advance. I just moved this. This was on the right side of the equation. I moved it over here to the left, just so that we can see it as a linear differential equation. It's perfectly set up. A lot of times you'll see, you might see different notation, like you might see this as a y, but we've got our derivative here and our function here. And then we have basically another function in terms of t right here. And you can also think of this as some function t, like oftentimes it'll be like, they might have this as like g of t or q of t or something, even though there's no t, it's just a constant, but still we can look at it as a function in t. Now for this equation, I'm just gonna do it out the long way like you've never seen this before, because maybe some people never have seen this before. We'll just kind of do it logically, which is we wanna see the left side of the equation as the product rule. And so we need to create something to kind of make that happen. What I'm gonna do is we wanna multiply in some other function t times the whole equation. So I'm gonna multiply that in on the left side and I'm also gonna multiply it in over here on the right side. And then we'll just focus on the left side and I'm gonna distribute this in. So, and we don't know what this is yet, we're gonna deal with that later, but we have this and distribute it in here. On this part, let's write it like half t ut ft. Now I said a second ago, we want this to be the product rule. And the way this needs to work is just pretend for a second that this is going to be u prime of t. Because that way, it's definitely going to work that if we have something like, you know, two functions that we don't know exactly what they are, and we take a derivative of this, the product rule on this is going to be, I'll do it kind of out of order, but we could do it like this plus change the order derivative of the derivative of the first thing times f of t. So just notice the product rule here on the right side, this is exactly what we have right here, if this is true. So what we wanna do is solve for it to be true, because we're creating this, we're making up what we're multiplying in. As long as we multiply it on both sides, we're fine. So all we need to do is find what is the function u of t that's gonna work here and turn this left side into the product rule. So for that, we just have another equation to solve. We can solve this thing right here. If we can solve this, we're all set. All I need to do is let's divide. What we have here is another differential equation, by the way, that we'll do really quick. I'll divide off u of t on both sides. That's gonna cancel there. Integrate on both sides with respect to t now. Integrate here with respect to t. This, we know how to do. This is just our natural log integral right here. Let's kind of come over this way. So if we integrate this, we get just natural log absolute value of this. I'm going to drop absolute value on it because it's going to be fine with the constant. So we'll leave it and do it like this. Here, integrating this one, power rule, it's going to be half t squared over 2 plus c. Again, we want to solve for this thing. This is the thing we need to know. So we'll use log properties. And so this function is just going to be e. Let's um, clean this up a little bit and we'll have it as, let's write it like e t squared over 4 plus c. But really, we don't want the plus c up there in the exponent like that. I could write it like this. But no, we really don't want it that way either because this e to the c is just another constant. So get rid of that and write it in front here like this. But actually, no, we don't want it that way either. So get rid of all the plus c's. And what's gonna happen is we're gonna have a plus c in our problem in the end. So we'll just deal with it then and we'll leave the plus c off. And so we're just gonna multiply in this thing right here into our equation that we started with. Okay, so here's what we're left with, just multiplying in this function that we created, knowing that when you take the derivative here, it's just gonna be the product rule. So this is gonna be the same thing as our left side here. And then what's next is we're gonna just integrate again. So integrate here and integrate here. I mean, that's a constant, of course, so we can do it like this. Keep in mind, everything's indefinite integrals at this point. We're just trying to get back to our f of t value here in order to finish it. So we don't have our bounds. And this here is a little bit of a problem. What we can do, so we can write it a different way. First of all, I can look at it as t over two squared 
But then what if I do a substitution on it? Let's use, I don't want to use u because we had it there. So I'll use, let's use y. So we'll do y equals t over 2. Then that means t equals 2y. So then dt equals 2 dy. So for this integral, what's going to happen? Doing our substitution, we end up with e to the y squared, 2dy, let's um, take the 2 out here, dy, and that's going to cancel right there. But this right here is kind of a problem. I can't, this has got no solution in terms of elementary functions. This is the same thing. The value for this thing is going to be imaginary error function of y with a square root of pi over 2 in front. So then when we do it, we can substitute back. So we can have this as square root of pi over 2, imaginary error function of t over 2, add a plus c, but that's not it, because we still need to solve for f of t. So let me so let me take this, and I'll plug it in for the right side of the equation, and we'll see if we can solve it for f of t. Okay, so now there is an easy simplification on the left side, of course, because we're integrating a derivative. So we can kind of clean it up just having it as... All that's going to be left is the u of t, this e t squared over 4 times f of t. So let me get rid of this. And then all we need to do to solve for f of t, divide off this e t squared of 4. So we'll divide it in, let's see, on both sides. So like, here, I'll just leave it on, it's going to be two different terms. So here, we'll leave it like this for the moment. And then here, we can write it with the plus c as e minus t squared over 4. And that's going to cancel out on the left side like that. And so now we have our f of t value. We just need to find out what is this f of 0 value. So we just need to plug in and see what's going on. So we plug in a 0 for t everywhere. We have square root of pi over 2. Now we have imaginary error function of 0. This just becomes a 1. We'll leave that off. Here, that's just going to become a 1. So we have plus c, and this is all equal to 0. But this is pretty good because the value of this function right here, it's zero, it's just zero. So this goes away and what we have here is c equals zero. So coming back to our definition for f of t, if c is zero, then this piece is going away and we've got a little bit of a simpler f of t. And so now all we need to do is evaluate f of three in order to finish it. So plugging in 3 on this for our f of 3 value, put this together for my final solution, we just get square root of pi, imaginary error function of 3 halves over 2 e, plug in here, and we got e to the 9 fourths, and that's it. So like I mentioned, it is quite a bit messier than the other problems. I think the other problem, the answer was square root of pi over 2 e. No exponent there and no imaginary error function. So the question you might have is, what is that right there? I don't really know. I'm going to have to look that up on Wolfram Alpha. I don't know what that comes to in a decimal, so I don't know what the whole thing is in a decimal, but I'll see if I can look it up later and get a better approximation for this. Anyway, that's it for today. Thanks, everyone, for watching. Have a good day.